How are we doing with the environment? Now, population's gone from what? Two, two and a half billion back then to we're pushing six or whatever it is now? Six and a half. Six and a half. Um, let's see. Air quality got better with the EPA that Mr. Nixon, by the way, started. But what about the big air? What about the global air? What about the composition of that? Not just the carbon dioxide and the stuff that leads to climate change, but what about the chemicals that we have lost that are a little more insidious than, than DDT, the whole endocrine disruptor thing? that's not just in the air, but now it's in the water and it's in the earth. Where are we with the environment today? In tough shape. Okay, Jack, now to respond to the short version of how I got into this. I, uh, I did an internship in Washington on the air pollution hearings back in 1965, um, before my freshman year here. And in 1989, I decided to look back at what was going on and discovered this thing called climate change was really moving around air. So I rolled down to um, Woods Hole, where George Woodwell was holding court. I was told that um, I should speak with Woodwell because he knew much about this. You see this gray hair? This is something of a function of that discussion with George. <laughs> Because he told me, very calmly, very organized, he said, you ever heard of biotic feedback? I said, uh, no, it's nothing to do with my speaker, right? No, biotic feedback says, as the earth warms, it will get warmer. There's all this carbon in the tundra and such, and just a little bit of warming means that that'll come out faster and we'll be, this is a runaway train if it gets out of control. And um, I said, well, I'm down here because I want to do a book about this stuff. George looked at me and he said, um, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody's told you, but I don't know that you're really qualified to do this book. I mean, there are people like uh, Steve Schneider, we've got Mike McElroy, I mean, all these people who know about this. I said, well, doggone it, nobody's doing anything about this on public radio. And so the next thing I knew, um, I had, you know, he'd call my bluff. I had to put this thing together. So uh, at Earth Day uh, plus 20, um, April of 1990, I did the first pilots for Living on Earth. And that was great fun, and it's a little <clears> bit depressing <throat> to look back. First four programs, among them, we had Sylvia Earle, her deepness about the state of the oceans. <laughs> they haven't gotten better. We did a debate about should nuclear power be rolled out to deal with the threat of climate change. We haven't made progress on that. Jesse Jackson came on the show to talk about environmental justice. And still, it seems that the less you have, uh, the more trouble you're going to have from our environmental degradation. And the one thing that has moved is that um, when I surveyed potential audience, about 14% of people said that they would want to hear stories about climate change. In other words, 86% of the people did not want to hear about this. Now, if you're in the broadcast business or the media business, and you like 86% of your potential audience isn't interested in the subject, um, you know, how far do you expect to get? Well, again, being from Harvard, having tilted at windmills, um, you know, whether it was Henry Kissinger here or whatever, I said, you know what? People need to learn this. If they don't think that they need to know this now, they do need to know this. So, Jack, that's what got me into this. And uh, the mission uh, keeps changing, but the, the, the one thing that, that hasn't changed is that I found, just at that day, at Earth Day, that it was, it's, it's all connected. That it wasn't, didn't make sense for me to, to, to try to step back because, well, maybe this isn't a civil rights issue or this isn't the women's rights issue that folks I knew were working on or whatever. It's all connected. And um, it's important to keep at it and to keep those connections going um, for us to really make progress. Because otherwise, if we go into our own little silos, we're done for. Um, the other thing is, is we have run out of time. Not just me yapping here, but for us as a planet. Um, we, we've got very little time left until we find a way to turn the system around. <laughs>